Now in somatic embryogenesis uh, there are two stages if you need to produce embryos from somatic cells which is called as somatic embryogenesis there are two stages. Stage 1 where there is induction of embryogenesis which means that the cells which are meant to form embryos or, or which are prone to become embryogenic in nature you induce them to undergo that program or the cells which are not determined to make embryos are determined then through reprogramming to make embryos. So, stage 1 is induction of embryogenesis and stage 2 is then the once the zygote is formed the different stages it undergoes to produce your in vitro plantlet. So, requirements for these two stages are different in terms of media. It is not necessary generally whatever media composition is working well with callus induction to induce embryos it may work well, but once for the development after induction of the embryos it might need revision of the media specific media composition. So, the different stages in the development of embryos differ morphologically. So, we will be looking at there is a picture on, there are four different stages before the hypocotyl uh, region appears. So, embryogenic cells generally what are they? They those which have competence and embryogenic in nature they are generally found to be small rich in cytoplasm and they are uh, the vacuole size is less. And uh, those cells which are non embryogenic they will be large vacuolated and less dense cytoplasm. So, embryogenic cells will have more dense cytoplasm in comparison to non embryogenic cells. And generally it is observed that they are once they are transferred into low auxin containing medium then uh, it induces pro embryos. Now, once the somatic embryos they are transferred from induction medium to developmental medium then uh, when it is taking place from a single cell the induction the single cell will divide into a number of cells 4 to 5 then forming a globular structure. Once the globular structure is formed it undergoes further development which means differentiation to uh, become a uh, torpedo shape and then after torpedo shape it undergoes further um, vascular bundle formation. Generally you can see in the hypocotyl regions where uh, the xylem elements start becoming visible and in the cotyledinous region. So, and then the cotyledons the shoot primordium and the root primordium appear. So, development and maturation it is similar to the zygotic embryo oh, so there are four stages known globular then heart shape then torpedo and cotyledonary stage. Now, all these are morphologically distinct you can clearly see once the embryo starts developing the somatic embryos oh, and moreover biochemically also molecularly they are different because differentiation is taking place vascular bundle formation is taking place and thereby leading to from the meristem region there will be a root meristem shoot meristem region appearing. So, what happens at torpedo stage cell differentiation occurs establishing the root and shoot meristem. Now, what is the torpedo stage? This third one which looks like a torpedo. Now, small cytoplasmically rich cells which are embryogenic are observed in these meristems and the rest of the cells they are vacuolated and mature cells which will form the bulk. Now, what are the factors which can affect embryogenesis it is nutrient medium especially sucrose and reduced nitrogen. Then light gases gases which means dissolved oxygen here then exogenous hormones your growth regulators. So, what can be the different applications of somatic embryos you can use them for micro propagation they are also used as organ cultures for secondary metabolite production. So, when I say secondary metabolite production how do you think uh, somatic embryos can be used for large scale secondary metabolite production? Micropropagation last class itself we know large amount of small plantlets can arise. So, then how come secondary metabolite production? Third application is given as they can be used as model system to study growth of the plant. So, that is also quite obvious how does an embryo develop inside. So, they can act as model systems to embryos real zygotic embryos. 
So, but how come they can be used for some secondary metabolites? How and why do you think? Somatic embryos are more organized than the cell cultures? Ma'am, is it because uh, all of them are being formed from the somatic cells, they are more consistent in the production of the secondary metabolite and uh, no, a large amount of variation in the quality of the secondary metabolite can't be seen, so that's the reason. One of the reasons can be that being an organized structure, it is less prone to soma clonal variation. So, uh, it is uh, and moreover secondary metabolism is also linked in plant cells with organogenesis and differentiation. It is a higher order function, secondary metabolism came later, primary metabolism is for growth and development. So, uh, secondary metabolism is a part of higher functions which means much more organized for survival. So, that needs cell to cell contacts, organogenesis to happen and differentiation into organ formation is nothing but getting into those organized functions, different cells come together to perform a specific function. So, it is more defined now. So, these kind of cells when come together they become organized structures, there the secondary metabolism is found to be more visible in terms of biosynthetic capacity. So, secondary metabolites yields are found to be higher in organized structures. Now, and the other is they are more stable than the callus or cell cultures. In the last class also they were showing for micropropagation, somatic embryos can be cultivated in reactors. So, one somatic embryo will give rise to another somatic embryos, multiplication should happen no, large scale cultivation means what? That in the reactors multiplication is happening. So, one somatic embryos will form another somatic embryo. So, it has to start from the cells. So, uh, logically can you give, propose a solution to it? What should be the starting material? What kind of cells? All cells, meristematic or much closer, which will have higher probability. You remember we had talked about cells with embryogenic, which are determined to produce embryos and those which are induced to produce embryos predetermined embryogenic potential. So, the cells which are now you have been able to find uh, if if you can find those cells else which have embryogenic potential, you use those cells bring them in suspension do large scale cultivation and then give them conditions to form organized structures called somatic embryos. Now, Mary stem culture we were discussing Mary stem culture is nothing but you make use of the meristematic regions of the plant which are lateral bud regions, axillary bud regions or apical meristems and which will be useful in making virus free plants. We also discussed about the reasons. <coughs> now, virus distribution is uneven throughout the plant and is much less in a meristem. The reasons were virus cannot travel quickly enough through the plasmodesmata. These are connections. So, as these meristematic regions the cells are rapidly dividing. So, the rate at which they are dividing and forming new cells the virus to travel from through these connections is the rate is lesser than that. So, one is this the probability of virus transfer is reduced. The second is as we were talking about the presence of vasculature is missing vascular bundles in the meristematic regions is missing they are still to form vascular elements. So, the transfer of therefore, virus is difficult to these regions. So, therefore, meristem culture is preferred to generate virus free plants. Coming on to protoplast culture, now what is protoplast? Cells devoid of cell wall. So, where do you think, why do you think protoplast culture people do? It can be of use, cells cannot be used for hybridization. Even with whole plants we see in agriculture, hybrids are produced. But it is about what is much easier, making the process much easier. So, when we say somatic hybridization, it will facilitate because somatic cells can easily be combined together. What are hybrids? What are hybrids? When I say a hybrid. <coughs> it is used for hybridization means what? So, when two cells can be combined such that the two nuclei combine to make one nuclei, uh, all their cellular content one cytoplasm and one nucleus. So, the nuclei have to combine together and the cytoplasm gets mixed. 
so that is so what is done the cells we know that the plant cells are attached to each other they are attached through the pectin rich layer what is that layer called lamella. middle lamella so uh, that layer has to be removed before the cell wall is removed so now the attachment is off now the cell wall is removed for the protoplasm to come together so now how the cell wall is removed there are two ways to remove the cell wall one is mechanical the other is enzymatic so in mechanical you we use a very sharp blade to cut the cell wall now if the plasma membrane in general will is closer to the cell wall so there are chances that the membrane can get ruptured so what should be done to avoid that to ease out this process mechanical separation of cells what should be done can you give a solution everything is done under the microscope first prerequisite is what to disintegrate to separate the cells so now that separation requires pectinase treatment or so once suppose the cells have been separated you have a single cell now there is a cell wall and the plasma membrane i need to cut the cell wall knowing that the plasma membrane is very close how to avoid that plasma membrane to be ruptured very nice very good so now can you just elaborate on this plasmolysis will help how the cell membrane contact like both and putting a hypothetical solution then again do you agree so that is what is done so you change the osmotic pressure by adding osmoticums such that the cell membrane distracts contracts such that the cell wall can be easily cut off now what care should be taken in this the viability should not be lost so as it is cut the balance has to be maintained because now it is becoming more fragile with only plasma membrane so then you you have to bring back the osmotic pressure such that if it is plasmolyzed and once the cell wall is out the uh, the cell is out the plasma membrane is the only barrier between the outside and the inside now it was plasmolyzed so now what will happen it was plasmolyzed because of higher or lower concentration outside of the solutes of the salts hyper means he said agreed so if it is higher concentration and the plasma membrane now the uh, plasmolyzed or your uh, plasma membrane is the only barrier left it is very high so now what will happen the viability will reduce so now you would like to balance it now while balancing you would like to reduce the concentration it is recommended not to suddenly reduce the osmotic pressure what is why it is recommended so if you suddenly reduce the osmotic pressure water will rapidly get into the cell and burst and the cell will burst so this care has to be taken the balance of the osmotic pressure when you are creating protoplas so these are functional individual cells with plasma membrane as the only outermost layer what can be the different applications of making protoplast or doing protoplast cultures you can obtain single cells why single cells if you want to do clonal propagation from single cells you want to then divide form a callus and then regenerate it into plantlets so this is a clonal propagation plant cell transformation or animal transformation in is the uptake of extracellular genetic material so or for even desirable genetic modification you need to do some uptake from extracellular to intracellular now what is what facilitates that uptake 
in plant cell if you want to do transformation what is the barrier first barrier cell wall so protoplast is devoid of cell wall so now transformation is much easier because the only barrier is plasma membrane complete plant of single cell origin can be produced then transformation is facilitated now you can even study once you have protoplast depending on the media composition once the protoplast starts dividing the nutrient conditions of these divided cells may be different from the original protoplast so the nutrient conditions can even live now the new cells need not be protoplast because they they are the genetic machinery there is to produce cell wall so the newer cells which will get produced will eventually develop cell wall so their nutritional requirements would be different and they can also be used for isolation of different cell organelles if the studies have to be done so then i was talking about what are the different ways of making protoplast one is mechanical the other is enzymatic now mechanical involves cutting off plasmolyzed cells with a sharp blade to release the protoplast now enzymatic would involve exposing the cells to various kinds of enzymes we know what kind of enzymes we need to remove the cell wall so all those enzymes which can degrade the cell wall or decompose the cell wall for example what are then you should know what is the composition of the plant cell wall cellulase hemicellulase pectinase so macerozyme is nothing but a mixture of so macerozyme dressylase these are names given by some companies for uh, their origin of organism is generally fungus so uh, these class of enzymes in together as a mix are also sold as for cell wall degradation plant cell wall degradation so then how it is done you sterilize the ex plant so generally uh, you sterilize the leaf ex plants <coughs> the epidermis is removed and then and the ex plant is incubated with these enzyme mixtures for some time and it is said that flaccid leaves facilitate peeling flaccid leaves means think logically what can it mean is it referring to the dried leaves or something like right drooping leaves drooping leaves means what lesser turgor pressure so when we are using cells then actively growing cells are used which are from the exponential phase for isolation of protoplast now conditions which should be optimized if we want to isolate protoplast there are enzyme concentration exposure time enzyme composition what are the different kinds of enzymes we are using then osmotic pressure the presence of osmoticums so the osmotic pressure what kind of solutes what concentrations we are using for the osmoticums now the enzymes generally used are in the concentration range of 0.5 to 2% where macerozyme which is a mixture of these kinds of enzymes or separately you can use cellulase pectinase hemicellulase and other enzyme mix like dressylase so enzyme solution and uh, sorbitol mannitol what is the purpose very nice so they are used as osmoticums to balance out the osmotic pressure then calcium chloride for membrane stability this it neutralizes tries to neutralize the surface charge reduces the surface charge so that it is protoplast or hybridization so generally if uh, if they have to be brought together for hybridization the surface charge should be neutralized so that they don't repel the membranes have to be fused isn't it so therefore it is treated with calcium chloride and it is also said that the genotype and the environmental factors can also impact protoplast isolation so the factors which will affect protoplast culture if you only want to do culture of protoplast then obviously because the only barrier is plasma membrane 
so osmotic pressure has to be balanced out carefully so osmotic pressure osmolarity of the medium is adjusted to the same level as the enzyme or the washing solution to which you are exposing it otherwise the cell can rupture or get non viable then prolonged culture at high osmotic pressure can result in the browning of the cells the osmolarity browning means necrosis or viability loss now the osmolarity of the medium what is done it is gradually decreased with cell wall formation and cell division gradually decreased we have discussed the reason being suddenly if you decrease it the water may gush inside the cell and the cell may burst so as the cell wall is getting formed with the barrier is getting formed the osmotic pressure is reduced abrupt decrease therefore should be avoided in the osmotic pressure what are the neutral re, uh, nutritional requirements as i said generally to begin with they can be similar to cell or callus cultures but once the cell starts dividing thing or then you need to the media composition might need to be revised presence of high ammonium concentration can be toxic to protoplasts why we were uh, uh, that day discussing that Uh, nitrate and ammonia are the nitrogen source for the plant cells isn't it and easy assimilation is ammonium nitrate also once it gets assimilated taken up it is converted into ammonium ions to be integrated into ammonia uh, uh, amino acids or many different other wherever it is needed so then why generally it is observed that if you give higher concentrations of ammonium um, there is uh, viability loss Uh, there is loss in growth of the plant this is called as ammonium toxicity knowing that isn't it interesting ammonium ultimately is needed nitrate is also getting converted to ammonia only before it gets into the metabolism so why not to give ammonium in directly if you give ammonium try to give ammonium directly to the plants it can be toxic to the plant cells why so very nice very good so uh, ammonium assimilation is found to be also related to release of h ions because it has to be taken in so in order to balance out there are channels so even ion transport takes place with something getting in something there is an efflux and influx parallel so that is called as to maintain the membrane potential so once the hydrogen ions are refluxed then there is acid acidification in the environment of the cells and there is the ph of the cell gets disturbed so which is said to be one of the reasons why plants then the growth is inhibited yeah usually carbon nitrogen vitamins plant growth regulators they are manipulated to facilitate which is case of any form of cultures now growth regulators combination of auxin and cytokinins it stimulates growth and division we know that so similar combination of cell and protoplast culture can be used that's why i said combination which you are using for callus or cell culture might work initially for the protoplast cultures but once the protoplast starts dividing into cells then it might need revision environmental factors light intensity very high light intensity can inhibit division in protoplast so there generally it is preferred that you use dim light or uh, you carry out in dark so and what else ph temperature is generally the same what you use for your plant cell cultures right heat treatment and electric impulse is found to induce division in protoplast it is said that immobilization sometimes helps in protoplast cultures which is very obvious why do you think immobilization would be useful in protoplast cultures don't read just think it gets more support thank you very much right so oh because we know that it is very fragile there is only the cell membrane barrier so encapsulating it in a gel form is giving it more protection now nurse culture and conditioned media is sometimes found to be useful to protoplast cultures nurse tissue culture technique which we had read earlier what was that using another cell to show that a single cell 
not using another maybe the extracts of the other cells can be useful for the growth of the your desired culture so protoplast fusion or somatic hybridization how is it done and what is it it is an alternate to conventional breeding protoplast fusion can overcome sexual incompatibility and obtaining somatic hybrids if you want to use somatic cells to produce hybrid cells now fusion of somatic cells and production of hybrids is known as somatic hybridization now fusion by treatment of somat so what all is needed you need either sodium ions so it is treated with sodium nitrate maybe it will be then calcium chloride then peg peg is polyethylene, polyethylene glycol so it is facilitated it is said you need to fuse you need to bring the cells together so therefore you will like to treat it with cations like sodium ions or calcium ions and polyethylene glycol how is polyethylene glycol peg is used in transformation isn't it what is it doing permeability so it is manipulating the permeability of the cell membrane reversibility reversibly so if if it is used it would facilitate what the cell membranes have to fuse together so that there is a transfer of nuclei organelles cytoplasm has to become one in hybrids isn't it so then transient pores have to be formed and the membranes have to get fused so polyethylene glycol is helping in fusion so all this is facilitating nothing but coming together of the cells fusion of the membranes by changing the permeability of the membranes fluidity of the membranes so what are the steps involved isolation of the protoplast first then induction of the membrane fusion mixing of cytoplasm and organelles would then happen then formation of syncaryons formation of syncaryons after the mixing has happened they will form syncaryons syncaryons means two nuclei is coming together to form one nuclei then selection of fusion products so once you have obtained you would select the right the desirable whether the proper fusion has happened or not under the microscope you will select the fused cells or hybrids now this then you use those cells you give them optimum conditions for those hybrids to multiply once they multiply then they would form callus and then from callus you can regenerate into hybrid plants so protoplast fusion membrane properties this is what we were discussing now process of protoplast fusion it requires what it would require direct contact of the protoplast so what is facilitated the addition would be facilitated by increasing divalent cations which means calcium or sodium ions so we have already discussed this this would change the surface properties of the cell membranes and using polyethylene glycol would change the fluidity of the membranes reversibly changing the or reversible permeability increasing changing the permeability of the membranes to take up the extra cellular material now direct dna or macro molecule uptake which is now cell membranes we know are semi solid structures this is what we have learnt in fluid mosaic model now fluidity of this membrane it is a physiological characteristics so now what is required how it is done we need to have as i said reversibly increase the pore size generally this is what is happening in the cells also it is the cells if they want to take up some macro molecules there are pores which are transient pores which are getting formed and then even when it gets damaged there is pore formation but there is process which is present in the cell to again bring back the membrane to its position and closing the holes so the same process is being facilitated by using your polyethylene glycol or any chemicals then or even short duration of you must have heard for transformations heat shock treatment is done or electric pulses electroporation is done so same thing can be used here to improve results of somatic hybridization so this is one of the protocols which is used for protoplast fusion in which you use high calcium ion concentration electric charge 
and the pH is also changed because it is said to have a profound effect on the uh, fusion of these protoplasts. So, what is it done? Uh, you mix sodium nitrate, PEG and sucrose, sucrose being an osmoticum knowing that once the protoplasts are there, so you need to balance the osmotic pressure. Then you uh, heat it at 35 degree C or uh, the, the protoplasts in this mixture and then you centrifuge the different whichever cells you want to produce a somatic hybrid, those cells are centrifuged and then again it is left at 30 degree C for some time for the fusion to happen. So, one is you are facilitating the fusion and then you are giving time for the syncaryons to form. Once the syncaryons have formed, then you check it, do the screening and then change the media composition for it to divide and form the cultures.